2017 Kia Niro. One hybrid that doesn't flaunt it. Highs and lows. Highs. Roomy interior, straightforward controls, stellar fuel economy ratings. Lows. Sluggish acceleration in default echo mode, applying the brakes is the only way to scrub speed. Midway through their second decade, hybrids have reached a critical juncture in the United States. While their technology is going to become increasingly important as automakers push to meet regulatory targets, gas prices, adjusted for inflation, are at their lowest consistent point since 2003. The latest Toyota Prius has embraced space oddity styling, but that doesn't appear to be spurring sales of that hybrid icon. The new Kia Niro, on the other hand, looks like the kind of vehicle that can inspire Americans to trade in their compact or mid-size sedans. The Niro is an approachable and practical, crossover-like hatchback one that just happens to have a hybrid powertrain and EPA city ratings of up to 52 mpg. Refreshingly straightforward, it has no unfortunate packaging concessions, no bizarre styling, and no weird controls that are different just for the sake of being different, we're looking at you, Prius Shifter. Blending in. The Nero is built on a dedicated compact hybrid vehicle platform shared with the Hyundai Ioniq. However, while the Ioniq sticks with a Prius-like comeback profile designed to squeeze the last tenth of a mile out of every gallon of gasoline, the Nero trades off some aerodynamic efficiency for greater passenger and cargo space. For the U.S. market especially, we think Kia made a smart choice. From across the parking lot, the Nero looks like a crossover SUV. Step closer, and it's clearly lower and more wagon-like. It's a slightly higher riding alternative to the Toyota Corolla I'm or the Ford Focus hatchback, yet it's lower and more squat than many small crossovers such as the Chevrolet Trax, Honda HRV, Mitsubishi Outlander Sport, or Fiat 500X. Seat height is about an inch and a half higher than that of a typical compact sedan, according to Kia, and slightly lower than the soles perfect for easy entry and exit. There's enough headroom and legroom in back for tall adults, and the rear seat backs flip forward, creating a flat cargo floor. Echo every time. The Nero, like Kia's Optima Hybrid, has a four-cylinder engine and a single AC electric motor slash generator integrated within a six-speed automatic transaxle. But much is different about both the engine and the gearbox. The engine is a new, Atkinson Cycle 1.6-liter four-cylinder with exhaust heat recovery and dual cooling circuits for quickly warming up the cylinder head. It makes 104 horsepower and 109 lb-ft of torque, and Kia claims it operates with 40% thermal efficiency, a lofty mark on that scale. The six-speed is a dual-clutch unit, with two hydraulically actuated multi-plate dry clutches finessing launches and shifts. The combined system output to the front wheels is 139 horsepower and 195 lb-ft of torque. In case you missed any previous hints that this is not a rugged SUV, note that all-wheel drive is missing from the lineup, and there are no plans to add it. Kia suggests that the dual-clutch gearbox at the core of the Nero's powertrain layout makes for a more engaging driving experience. But with every startup and shift into drive, the Nero defaults to its Echo Mode a setting that prefers higher gears, delivers sluggish downshifts, and in which stabs of the accelerator bring a long pause before anything happens. Start off gingerly enough to avoid waking the gasoline engine and you'll probably be irritating the traffic behind. The Nero is fairly aggressive about shutting down the gasoline engine when you're crawling along in dense traffic or in city driving at less than 30 miles per hour or so. Sliding the shift lever over to the left engages the Nero's perkier sport mode, with somewhat firmer steering, sharper accelerator response, and a dramatically different shift schedule. You'll pay a mileage penalty using that mode, as it keeps the engine running the vast majority of the time. And with a 0 to 60 mph time expected to be on the far side of the 10 second mark about the same or slightly slower than the Prius the Nero still isn't quick. The one drivability aspect we found a little off-putting was the almost complete lack of engine braking. 
In sport, you can pull the shifter back to downshift a gear or two to manage speed down a long grade, for instance. You'll hear the engine revving higher, but there's no significant deceleration. Nor is there any sign of increased regenerative braking on the in-dash readout. We also experienced a few powertrain judders and uncouth transmission sounds. Unlike Toyota, Hyundai slash Kia doesn't have 20 years of experience with hybrid system software mapping, and it can show in that way. That said, the Korean companies have made tremendous progress in hybrid drivability in a relatively short period including the Nero's great pedal feel blending regenerative and mechanical braking. The Nero also exhibits good ride, handling, and NVH qualities. Although it doesn't feel overtly sporty, on the South Texas back roads where we drove the Nero, we found good body control and a lack of the queasy rebound moments that you find in some crossovers. The steering is nicely weighted and requires very few corrections to maintain a straight path on the highway. A rubber isolated front subframe helps keep vibrations and harshness from reaching the cabin, and all Nero models have an acoustically insulated windshield. No hybrid would be complete without some Echo Geek goodies, although the Nero generally keeps such things rather subtle. Grill shutters automatically close at approximately 35 miles per hour to diminish drag, and the Nero has a host of underbody airflow smoothing items, including an air deflector for the muffler. The available navigation system accesses GPS data for road topography and can advise the driver when to lift off the gas such as when going down hills or exiting freeway ramps and can direct the powertrain to shunt electrons to prec charging the battery pack in anticipation of long uphill grades. It all adds up to exemplary fuel economy ratings, 52 mpg city and 49 mpg highway for the miserly FE version, 5146 mpg for the LX and X models at the heart of the lineup, and 4640 mpg for the touring models we drove. That's a significant difference in mileage across versions with seemingly minor differences, Kia says that all of the core hybrid components remain the same but point to the touring's nearly 170 pounds of extra equipment and wider tires, 225-45 R18 vs. 205-60 R16. The Nero will start reaching U.S. dealerships in January. All models get a rear-view camera and a 7.0-inch infotainment system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connectivity. Compared with the more affordable LX, the X model makes a significant step up in terms of interior comforts, adding standard heated front seats, rear AC vents, upgraded trim, and an available sunroof. Touring models upgrade their audio significantly with an 8-speaker Harman slash Kardon system and also get power front seats and leather upholstery. Adaptive cruise control and automated emergency braking are among the features available on top X and Touring models. As with the Hyundai Ioniq, this hybrid version is only one iteration of Kia's green machine. A plug-in hybrid Nero is due to arrive next September, and an all-electric variant is expected to complete the family, likely in early 2018. In the meantime, those who choose a Nero because it is the size and shape they want probably will find a lot of value in this model's generally pleasant driving experience and roomy interior not to mention a lot more monetary value should gas prices rise.